Hello children. Welcome back to the DPS Dhanbad virtual classroom. Locked up since the past 15 days, I have been thinking, how had our lives been? Had Babbage not thought of a device will, which will make everyone's work easier, simpler and reduce time consumption too? Many of us have not even realized the tension of the lockdown. We are busy taking up WhatsApp challenges, PUBG, music, videos are all entertaining us. How had all this been made possible? All of this had been made possible with the international network of computers, the internet. Babbage, I hope you remember, was given the title of father of computer because of his modern age reprogrammable computers. Today, computers have become inevitable parts of our life. Finding solutions for almost every field, taking up simple tasks like washing clothes, baking a cake at home, finding remote controls for your toys, or bigger projects like medical diagnosis, transportation, weather forecasting, space research, etc, etc. So today we continue with our topic. We'll study about the different early computers of the 20th century. The evolution of modern age computer has been divided into generations based on the technology used in them for input, processing, output and storage. The first generation of computers designed from the year 1940 to 1956 witnessed the use of vacuum tubes. A vacuum tube is a sealed glass tube which contains a near vacuum and allows free passage of electric current. The first generation computer also witnessed the use of punched cards for input, output and storage. What is a punch card? A punch card is a piece of stiff paper that can be used to contain digital data represented by the presence or absence of holes at predefined positions. Punch cards were widely used through much of the 20th century in the data processing industry for data input, output and storage. Many early digital computers used punch cards as the primary medium for input of both computer programs and data. The first computer we'll study about in this generation was the Mark I. This computer was built from switches, relays, rotating shafts, clutches and hundreds of miles of wires. Mark I was a general purpose electromechanical computer developed in the year 1944. It was initially designed by Professor Howard Eichen and presented to the IBM in the year 1937. The machine was built by IBM and by, was ready by the year 1944 to do computations for the US Navy Bureau of Ships. The next computer was the ENIAC. ENIAC or the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator was the first electronic general purpose digital computer. It was designed by J. Presper Eckert and John Molly. They were from the University of Pennsylvania, US. Its construction was completed in 1945 and was put to work for practical purposes by the beginning of 1946. It was labeled as giant brain by the press. Why? 
it had a speed of at least about 1000 times faster than the earlier used electromechanical machines. It could be used for general purposes and it could be reprogrammed. ENIAC was designed and primarily used to calculate artillery firing tables for the US Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory. Its first program was a study of the feasibility of the thermonuclear weapon. Next came the UNIVAC-1. The Universal Automatic Computer was the electronic digital computer designed for business applications. This was also designed by John Molly and J. Pres Prespa Eckert who had earlier designed ENIAC. The system used about 5,000 vacuum tubes and could perform about 1,905 operations per second. We studied, we heard about the vacuum tubes, the vacuum tubes being used in the first generation computers. But the vacuum tubes also had some disadvantages. They released large amount of heat. They were bulky. So the computers manufactured using vacuum tubes were very big in size, almost the size of a room. And they were sometimes unreliable also. So these vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors in the second generation. In the forthcoming videos, you will see the features of the second third, fourth and fifth generation computers. Modern age computers are divided into different categories based on their size and the purpose they serve. Starting from the smallest, we have the embedded computers. Embedded computers are very small computers which are used to control the functioning of other devices. Like we embed, we place a small computer in a digital watch, in the traffic light controller, in the medical imaging system to get the output as per our requirement. Next comes the microcomputer. Microcomputer or more popularly known as the personal computer is the widely used, the most popularly used computers of today's world. The size is the smallest. Starts starting from the desktop computer, the size varies to the small handheld systems like the mobile phone. The mobile phones have now no longer remained a phone. They have become nowadays phone plus computer. So they are all personal computers, a single user system. Means one person gives instruction to this computer at a time. They have fast processing speed and high storage capacity. They can be carried from one place to another very easily in most of the cases. That means they are easily portable. Next are the mini computers. They are multi-user systems and larger in size than the micro computers. They have better storage capacity and higher processing speed too. Some of the mini computers are CDC 160A and CDC 1700. Yet larger computers are the mainframes. Mainframes are larger than the mini computers. They have better processing speed and storage capacity than the mini, use, mini computers. But they are also multi-user systems. Now what are multi-user systems? When several hundred people can give instructions to the same computer for getting the desired output, 
that is called multi user system mini computers and mainframe computers are used in big organizations like banks railways etc where large amount of digital manipulation is required data manipulation in large quantity is required in these organizations and so mini computers and mainframes are used there the last and the biggest the most powerful are the supercomputers they are performing specific functions in different fields like the national weather service uses a supercomputer for weather forecasting the supercomputer deep blue was used for playing chess the supercomputer kalpana is being used at nasa for doing space research and here i must make a mention that this supercomputer has been named after kalpana chavla the indian born astronaut who died in the columbia space shuttle disaster param is a supercomputer designed in india and as for today summit is the most powerful computer concluding this session i would like to inform you all that you can download the worksheets from the school's website www.dpsdhanbad.edu.in you can also post your queries and suggestions in the comment box till then thank you have a nice day